So every now and then, Apple releases a new feature or a new update that reminds us and makes us think like, wow, this is why the Apple brand is so powerful, both domestically and worldwide. Apple's always been in the forefront of being as inclusionary as possible when it comes to getting their tech in the hands of as many people as possible because not everybody is cut from the same cloth, not everybody is able to see the same, not everybody is able to move the same, but Apple with all their accessibility features and their foot forward has always wanted to get their tech in the hands of everybody because they want technology to maximize that person's life and being able to use it is a key to get that done. So with the press release, Apple did introduce new features for cognitive accessibility, along with live speech, personal voice, and a point and speak in magnifier in order to, again, bring more of those features and make everything as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. So in this video, I wanna talk about everything Apple introduced, but then also talk about what that means because Apple's been releasing some features via press release and we still haven't seen what WWDC has in store. So let's talk about everything Apple introduced as well as what it means moving forward. Let's get into it. So the first new feature is called assistive access. And this is exactly what it sounds like. This is actually made for people with cognitive disabilities. So basically what Apple did was they grabbed all their main applications, which is the applications that make an iPhone or an iPad an iPad. And basically those applications are the photos app, the messages app, the music app, the phone app, all the apps that again, make the experience of owning an iPhone and being able to use an iPhone that much better. So what Apple did is that they distilled those apps to what was essential to that experience. So if you can see with some of these screenshots, for instance, in this photo app preview, it shows that Apple distilled everything down to one big button on the bottom, which is the back button. It introduced a new layout for the actual photos that have been already taken. So bigger squares, bigger rectangles to be able to see what's going on, being able to actually click on those whenever you need to. And then on top, just a big photos category so people understand and know where they are inside of that application. So again, making it as easy to use, read, and actually manipulate whenever needed. So you can scroll through, find the photos that you want that have been taken and shared with you. As you can see with the camera app, they did something very similar, right? They made it just the camera app. So you have your viewfinder, you have a big contrasty take photo button, and then your back button to get you back to where you were. So again, making it as easy as possible to open up your iPhone, click on the camera app itself, which I'm gonna show you how Apple's gonna add a new grid layout to make it as easy as possible to access those main applications. And that is what this is all about, right? Ease of use, ease of access, and being able to put this tech into more and more people's hands without having to restrict them with things being so kind of in your face, being very complicated with everything that's added on there. Everything has been stripped down to make sure that it has all the needed actions and not all the fluff that we now see with all these applications. Some other examples that Apple showed in this is the call application. So it pretty much distills everything down to just a few contacts with larger buttons, with good opacity, with good contrast to make sure that people can actually visualize it and see it. Then you click it and then you start making your phone call. They combine the phone call and the FaceTime application together into one to make it as simple and seamless as possible. I think Apple should actually do that with the regular iPhone layout because having a FaceTime and a phone button at the same time or application is kind of redundant and unneeded. Apple Music is also getting a nice little transformation with this new UI, larger text, larger font, thicker font, being able to kind of select whatever song you want, being able to play it back. And then even down to being able to use iMessage, right? You still have probably the ability to use a keyboard, but then also bringing it all the way down to being able to communicate just via emojis, right? Because now we live in a world where an emoji can be six, seven, eight words. So being able to just use emoji text to maybe react or have a conversation inside of iMessage is what Apple has introduced with this new layout and this new form factor. And then you can see what Apple did with, let's say something like a home screen. Right now we can put over 100,000 apps on our phone screen and all of the apps kind of just stay there and they get lost. And then to be able to find it, I usually go into spotlight and things like that. But for this one, Apple has distilled it down again to just larger buttons to make sure that people can actually click on those applications whenever they need to. So you can do this on the iPad and the iPhone. And some of these accessibility features will be coming to Mac OS as well. But again, there's a big focus on iPhone and iPad accessibility. Now, the next thing Apple announced, which I think is very, very cool, and you're going to kind of start to see this theme, I think, personally, right? Because We've been seeing a big theme when it comes to AI, AI this, AI that, generative AI, being able to use AI to kind of control your entire life. But Apple, I think, is gonna have a completely different spin on it because Apple does things their own way. They're not gonna call it AI. That's, you know, that's a buzzword for the rest of the world to play with. Theirs is gonna be all about machine learning. Probably gonna be the same kind of thing, but Apple is gonna push it and market it as something kind of different to make it not as, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, creepy, because that's what AI is. But machine learning, what they're gonna be able to do with this is what they're doing with it first is again on the accessibility side. So the next feature is called live speech and personal voice advanced speech accessibility. So it's exactly what it sounds like. So being able to use your voice 
and text to talk as well during all of your communicating in whatever communication apps you're using. So for instance, with live speech, you're able to use it on iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and it's what it sounds like, right? You can type out what you wanna be said, and then once you type it out, you press enter, you press send, it's gonna actually speak that into existence. And this can be used in multiple facets because the first use case that I thought was, you know, somebody in a hospital bed that unfortunately can't speak, or maybe they have like something in their mouth to help them breathe, but they wanna kind of write something out or say something, you see that classic image in your head where somebody gets whiteboard and starts writing out what they wanna say. This can actually be used in multiple facets. The first one is that in-person situation where you maybe you type something out, you hold your phone out, and then the phone dictates what you wrote out. But this can also be used in a phone call as well as in a FaceTime. And then also similar to how Apple's integrated this into like Apple Watches and in the Do Not Disturb, where like let's say somebody's calling you and you want to decline the call, but you want to send a can I, can I call you later text message at the same time. Apple is doing that as well with voice. So you're able to kind of save certain phrases and certain speeches to actually just immediately type that out. So if you wanted to just have, hey, how are you? As one of your live speech kind of saved phrases, you can actually do that and you can have as many as you want just to kind of expedite the process a little bit more because I'm sure it will be a little bit different if somebody's talking to you on the phone and then you have to sit there and type for a split second to then send that off to somebody to then be spoken to them. So having some saved phrases is also key during this whole transition and this whole kind of new feature set. And in this same light, Apple's introducing something called personal voice, which I think is gonna be the coolest one. And again, this goes back to all that AI talk. And the first thing I thought about was when people were making music, like that Drake song and the Weeknd song that came out that wasn't their song, and it was being created with AI. So this is exactly what that is. So Apple is creating a new interface where with just 15 minutes of speech, you're able to teach kind of the iPhone what your personal voice kind of sounds like. And after those 15 minutes of it, learning how you speak, learning your inflections, learning the words that you use, then it can actually use machine learning. You know, it's not gonna say AI, but it's gonna use machine learning to then be able to use that 15 minutes of speech to be able to kind of use your voice whenever you wanna type something out. So same with the live speech, you're able to type something out, but it's your voice responding to it, even though you won't be able to speak. And this came out because they wanna be able to support people with ALS, because as ALL progresses, you start to lose your ability to speak. So being able to save your personal voice on an iPhone so you're still able to technically speak even after the fact is gonna be huge for a lot of families and a lot of people out there. So again, Apple being as inclusionary as possible with as many people as possible as well, I'd love to see that. And then lastly, you have the new features in the Magnifier app. Now, I don't know how many people actually even know that the Magnifier app exists. There's a couple ways to access this. If you wanna use it in the control center, there is the Magnifier kind of button to get into that application. I actually also have it as a shortcut, so if I triple click my lock button, it'll pop up the Magnifier kind of UI and interface. And originally, it was used for a couple things, right? First, it was a magnifier. Then also, you're able to measure distances via the LiDAR scanner. And then also, during COVID, you were able to see in front of you kind of how far somebody was if you were able to keep that six feet of distance. Also, they added some new accessibility features in there over the last couple of years to kind of tell you like, hey, you know, maybe if you can't really see or you have low vision or you are blind, you need to know if there's a door in front of you, you just hold that up and it'll tell you like, hey, there's a door in front of you, get ready to open it and things like that. So what Apple's doing with this magnifier kind of upgrade is just that. They are updating and giving us more features inside the magnifier app, which I'm all for. So Apple showed a little teaser video of how this is gonna be able to work. So basically it's gonna use the camera and the LiDAR scanner, as well as your finger and whatever kind of thing you use to point with to let you know like what you're about to click on. And the teaser that they used was using a Cook time. microwave, right? So being able to see pizza. where the start stop is, where Power the numbers level. are, whether you're gonna add 30 seconds. Or pizza or defrost something. The magnifier is able to see that, read that, speak it to you so you know exactly what you're pressing on. And this new feature is gonna be called the new point and speak through the magnifier application. And again, this is gonna work in many facets. Again, it's gonna work with the being able to point and speak, so pointing it at a door, pointing it at signs, so it could speak to you what that sign says, pointing it to your microwave, to your oven, to your stove. Pretty much anything that it can see, it's gonna be able to then dictate it back to you to say, hey, this is what you're looking at, and if you wanna do it, go ahead and do it. So this is the new point and speak feature inside the Magnifier app, easy to access. I'll probably have a video later on actually previewing all the software once it does release during iOS 17, because that is a projected release date or projected kind of release schedule for these features. And then some smaller things that Apple actually announced is adding the ability to add a made for iPhone hearing devices to be able to connect those directly to a Mac and not just to an iPhone or iPad having easier access to changing text size kind of universally inside the actual applications. So being able to change it one time natively in your settings, but then that going across even third-party apps. So again, Apple is putting a big foot forward and being able to get this tech in front of as many people as possible without limiting them because of maybe UI or software or something like that, because people are still gonna be able to use this stuff to be creative and kind of enhance their lives overall. So why limit it by only giving it to the you know vast majority of the population? Bringing it down to as many people as possible is going to be key and that's what makes Apple, 
Apple, everybody. But that is pretty much everything Apple announced. And I quickly do want to mention, like I said earlier, that Apple announcing all these new kind of feature sets during these press releases as opposed to WWDC makes me think that Apple's got something even bigger in store. So obviously Apple released Final Cut Pro via press release. They introduced all these new accessibility features via press release. They even announced some new like concert finding feature, which I'll touch on in a little bit in another video. So Apple with WWDC, I'm sure they're going to talk about some more iOS 17 features, but I really do think we could be getting some sort of VR, AR software that Apple's gonna be taking up a good chunk of the actual presentation during WWDC, which should be coming around in the next two to three weeks in early June. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Let me know what you think with a comment down below of these features. Is it something that you're gonna be able to use? Are you happy about this? I'm ecstatic that Apple's bringing this to the forefront and kind of putting a lot of R&D and money towards this because it's very important moving forward. But also let me know with a comment down below what you think Apple's gonna be announcing during WWDC. Is it gonna be some game-changing software? Is it that AR, VR headset? Is it a new form factor? Is it a foldable iPhone? With Apple, you never really know what that one more thing could be. But if you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. And shout out Alex West for commenting on our mini tech EDC video from before. Like I said, if you guys leave a comment, I'll try to shout out one person in the end of each video just to say thank you for watching to the end. But that is going to do it, everybody. If you want to watch more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS content, click on one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Matter you, everybody. Peace.